If there's one thing we've seen more than anything else during this entire presidential primary and now presidential campaign season, it's that people are really mad at the government. Uh, they don't trust it. They don't like it. They don't like the way things are going. They say the country's on the wrong path. And they overall think that politicians in general, as has always been the case, are dishonest. They're not loyal to the constituents. They're loyal to big business. Well, good news. I have five steps that we could take as a country to finally bring some more accountability and honesty to our federal government. Step one, the most obvious, we have to get money out of politics. And I know that sounds like such an easy thing, get money out of politics, but we would have to have a constitutional convention in order to get that amendment passed. Same thing with all of the, the steps about to follow. But if we got rid of all money flowing to politicians, that includes, you know, you going on somebody's website and donating $5, that should not be allowed. Corporations should not be able to give one single penny to a candidate. They should not be able to hold fundraisers. They should not be able to, you know, lend them their, their jet or their bus or their, their space. We'd have to have public financing of all federal elections, president, house, Senate, all funded by the public. So where does that money come from? Here's where it gets interesting. If we took the public financing for elections money from the military defense budget, which is already the largest in the world, the largest uh, expenditure of our federal government, it would not only drain some money from these defense contractors who are profiting off death, it would also make politicians a little more leery about spending military money to run their campaigns. That's how you solve that problem. Step number two, we need congressional term limits. The reason we have term limits on the office of the president is because people did not want some kind of uh, dictator basically coming in, taking over and having all of this absolute power. But isn't that what happens in the House and Senate when we have people that have been sitting in there for 20 or 30 years, they get the best committee assignments, they wield more power, they know more people. They have all the power, they have that. We have to end that. I say 12 years for House, which is six terms, 12 years for Senate, which is two terms. But then after that, in order to get uh, uh, your pension, you have to stay on for an additional six years and mentor your replacement. See, a lot of people with term limits are worried, well, then we're gonna have so many inexperienced people. That's why you make the experienced people work another six years, uh, full pay, we can do that, with, uh, in the role of a mentor. So that way you always do have somebody knowing what's going on, but that person is not allowed to draft, write, sign, or do anything involving legislation. They're there as a teacher, not as an elected official. Step number three, we have to ban outright the meeting of politicians and lobbyists. If you are an elected official, it should be illegal for you to meet with a lobbyist of any kind. Instead, members of your staff can meet with a lobbyist on the grounds that they also meet with the opposition side. Any meeting has to include both sides with equal time. And then the aide, the staffer, whoever can go meet with the elected official and tell them what they think about the issue, what happened during the meeting. Uh, we need full transcripts so the politician can read this and that will help reduce the influence that lobbyists have over our politicians. Number four, we have a big problem with politicians leaving office and going out and becoming lobbyists. Right now there is a, a waiting period. I believe it's been shortened. It's two, four years, something of that nature. It needs to be forever. If you have ever served in elected office, you are banned for life from ever serving as a lobbyist or anyone who has any connection to a corporation and to politicians. That has to be banned. That is one of the biggest steps here. And number five, the final way we finally bring some accountability to our democracy is we make election day a national holiday. Every single person in this country gets off work. If you're unable to take the full day, whatever corporation company you're with, then you have to give all of your employees half day. You figure it out, you stagger the schedule however you need to do it, but you make damn sure 
that uh, your, your employees are able to get off of work to go vote without being penalized. We also need to provide uh, uh, buses to areas where people are unable to drive or walk to the polls. We need to provide transportation for anyone who is unable to get there. And we need to increase early voting, increase absentee ballots, um, and that way we get as many people as possible participating in the electoral process. So there you have it. Five steps that we could take as a country uh, within the next couple years to re revive accountability in our political process. They're easy steps, would take some work to get them done, but if we did, I promise you, we would see a majorly massive change in what happens in Washington, D.C.